Like, oh, you can, yeah. you know. I knew that I'm was walking, coming, bro. I'm walking down the hall, like the hall, aisles, and everyone's like, you can. Like, <laughs> and I'm just I, looking up, like, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable Podcast. Today we have Woody with us. Thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate oh, yeah. you having me. Thanks yeah. for coming down. Happy yeah, to be yeah, here. Man. I'm not happy to be in Florida, though. <laughs> I feel that. Yeah. Yeah, it's been rough. Oh, yeah. you have a mic, too. I do. Well, damn, this is I'm awesome. the voice of reason. Yeah. <laughs> That's our he's, like, our ja- yeah, he's our like Jamie. the Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah, you said right when you stepped off the plane, it was an adjustment. Yeah, it was rough. We got off the plane because uh, it was cold where we left. It was like hoodie and, and cold down in L.A. And then we got here and we were walking out like the, the little sliding glass doors as buses were driving by. And we thought we were just breathing their exhaust in. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> yeah. and then and then the buses went away. Yeah. Right. Florida smell. <laughs> we're like, oh, that sucks. And then like a minute later, we're like, oh, this still sucks. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. just Florida. Yeah, it's a rough state. Just that thick air. Yeah. 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 I get really upset like every time I see like my favorite bands going on tour. They always skip Florida. And yeah. I'm like... I get it. I get it. <laughs> I, I get now it. get I it. it. Yeah, for sure. That, you, that or they it. go to like Jacksonville. They're like, what yeah. is this? Like? Orlando's <laughs> big now. Damn. Well, I feel like people that were like born here, that environment affects them negatively. Yeah. Like Cam was born here. Oh, for yeah. sure. I see. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. affected my everything. My health, for yeah. sure. <laughs> we'll say like uh, movies and video games have really like nailed it as far as like portraying what, what uh, Florida looks like. It was oh, everything I expected. The beaches, the palm trees, like Oh it, yeah. 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 It's like Grand crime. Theft Auto, Vice City, yeah. like <laughs> homeless <through> people. Sex <laughs> cars that yeah. are crashing. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, when you, rent, when you rent a car, there is crack in the glove box. Oh, yeah. 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 Hotels have Bibles. Nice yeah. cars have crack. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they asked us at the at the front. They were like, "Crack? Like, do you want a complimentary crack?" Like, yeah, right. Like, like, Shout like, out like, Hilton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we don't, don't want to be rude. Yeah. Yeah. I want to like, do even Florida. If you don't smoke it. Just take it. so I want to talk about your new shop. Oh yeah. Yep. What's the name? Uh, it's Tiny Wounds Tattoo. Tiny Wounds. Tiny Wounds. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Like, How was figuring out the name? Uh. Okay, so in my wife's hiding over in the corner for anyone that, that can't see her back there. But in our house, uh, the door that goes between the garage, which is now like my art studio and our living room, we've uh, put that like whiteboard epoxy on. So okay. we can just write right on our door. And that's where I write like skit ideas. And yeah. if I just wake up in the middle of the night and have a thought, I run to the door and jot it down. Uh, so when we first got the idea for doing the shop, we were like, okay, let's, let's talk out names. And we wrote like 20 of them down on there and tiny wounds made it for whatever reason, (laughs) just on the list. What were some of the other ones? Oh, so we were originally going to be in a different location. Okay. uh, That was like two minutes from uh, our house, which would have been ideal. And that's its own story. But uh, it was on just a little side street, so I thought side street tattoo was, you know, a good name for a shop. I yeah, thought I don't that was mind cool. that at all, actually. Yeah, and then we opened up not on a side street. Right. So. <laughs> You're on, like, like, a main road. Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah, and uh, on, like, a five-hour flight, I was, like, drawing all these logos and everything for yeah. side street tattoo, so those will just be buried in my iPad for... <laughs> Forever. I feel like that's a part that's not talked about as much. Yeah. Because for me, like coming up with the name in the logo is one of the weirdest, yeah. most stressful parts. For sure. It, and it's the thing that I keep second guessing too. Because what, why we went with Tiny Wounds was I feel like it fit like the brand very well of yeah. like, you know, I'm not trying to be a tough tattooer. I'm not even trying to be a cool tattooer. So <laughs> like Tiny Wounds is such like an adorable little tattoo shop name yeah. that the thought was like, if there's an artist out there that wants to work for me, the first thing they have to put up with is working at a shop with a really weird name. Right. <laughs> so like if there's someone out there that's like, I wouldn't fucking work at Tiny Wounds. It's like, great. Yeah. We don't want you. <laughs> right. like, we're, we're not the right place for you. I've definitely noticed though, that like you create your own brand. Right. Um, and even though, you know, we will put a lot of pressure on ourselves as a shop owner about the name. I don't think it means as much as we think. For sure. Right? Because <laughs> yeah. you, you build it up. I'll give you an example. Um, when my boy and I were um, younger 
and we were like homeless and like strung out and and just like super weird people. Like right. you'd see us walking on the street, you would cross the road. Yeah. <laughs> like leave those two alone. <laughs> Like, we would be in psychosis, and, like, one of the things that we would say to each other, um, if something was, like, good or bad, it was just kind of like a word you could always use, we would be like, yo, that shit's bang, bang. Okay. Right? Yeah. And it was this weird, like, language <laughs> from, like, being together too much. Strange name. And yeah. I remember when I saw in New York that shop called Bang Bang, I was like, that's weird because I associated right. it with my weird drugged out stage <laughs> in my buddy. Um, but obviously, like, they put a lot of money into it. They've created tons of artists and, and they've created this brand. Sure. And now you associate maybe this word, or at least I will, with like a high end tattoo shop. That's true. That's a good point. But it's a weird fucking phrase. Yeah. Bang, bang. You know? <laughs> I think of shrimp, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, I just imagine they finish the tattoo and they're like, are, are we done? How is it? And you're like, bang, bang. bang. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you know what I mean? Like, you build totally. it up with the artist, whatever. So I could even see, I mean, bro, like, in, in old movies and stuff like that, like, the biggest guy in the crew was named Tiny. Sure. Right? Yeah. right. So, like, like if you ever yeah. wanted to, you could make it a real tough shot. <laughs> yeah. Tiny wounds. Tiny you know? wounds. <laughs> oh, because it's actually yeah. big wounds or yeah. whatever. Welcome uh, to Whittle Wounds. Yeah, <laughs> Whittle <yeah>. Wounds. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. You got it. I mean, the shop's open, yep. right? Yep. It shop has a open. name. It has a logo. Right. What's the logo? I've always been doing, like, the graphic design thing, so. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a, oh, like a yeah. Cool. Yeah. Stab him through a W. How oh, is it gone? It's gone. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that was just kind of the fun part for me, just designing that yeah. up and coming up with all that. Um, yeah, the other thing about the name that I noticed, uh, the last shop I worked for uh, had, like, a very generic tattoo name. You know how they're always, like, you know, red ink or black. Or what, black they love the word black. No, yeah. 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 Noir. <laughs> I noticed so many times I'd be talking to my clients and they would get the name of the shop that I was working at wrong. Right. And I was like, oh, it matters like that little. Yeah. That you don't even know yeah. the actual name of the shop, but you're here, you're getting tattooed. And that's great. So uh, I think that took a little bit of the pressure of naming it off. But we stuck to it pretty much since day one. We wrote all the names down. We erased the ones that we thought were stupid and ended with tiny wounds. So, and from there we're like, all right, we're never changing our mind. Like yeah, that yeah, is yeah, it yeah. forever. Can we hear the other stupid ones? I, we, I wish I knew. I, man, I wish I would have taken a picture, but yeah, it was like one conversation. It's fine. You don't have to tell yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> Little Woody tattoos. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I saw the TW and it's like tattoo Woody. There, you there know? you go. Yeah, it's all, it's all we'll a plan. If you ever want to become a rapper, Little Woody. That's right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> A funny thing about the TW, I worked at a shop called Don't Tell Mom Tattoo. Okay. And the whole reason it was named that was because the guy that I worked with went by Danny the Machine. So they were both DTM. Uh. So when he went to name his tattoo shop, I mean, this guy probably thought for like a week of like what could land with DTM and came up with right. Don't Tell Mom, which I mean, silly, silly tattoo shop name, but it worked. Right. <laughs> so what inspired opening? Cause this is your first shop, right? This is my first tattoo shop. I owned, uh, I used to own vape shops back in the day. Oh, so, yeah. Wow. Okay. So I had a, uh, thank you. I had three of those, uh, from when I was like 24 to 28 years old. I, I had vape shops. Yeah. So I did that for a little while, but this is the first tattoo shop. So I kind of went into it having just a little bit of like the business mind behind things, yeah. even though the tattoo industry is such a different, like, league of its own right. uh, you know compared to just a retail uh place but basically the shop that i was working at uh at the beginning of the year i went to my boss and i was like hey i need an assistant like yeah. uh i rented two booths over there just because i was like hey i want ample room just so you know i never feel too cramped which was the reason i left the shop before is we were just cramming too many people in there so i was like hey i'm getting to the point that with this content creating stuff, with, you know, everything else that I'm doing, I'm just running out of hours in the day and I need someone to help. But I also knew that, like, when he hired me at the shop, he only hired me. He didn't hire me plus someone that's going to be there every minute that I will do. Yeah. So I wanted to be fair about it and say, hey, you know, I, I need a little extra help. Is that something you're cool with? And uh, it was like, even to make this better, because it was a private studio, but people would come up to our door all day sure. long and... Um, 
since I was the closest one to the front door, it just became my job to like stop what I was doing and go like and answer the clients. Yeah. yeah. And it was a lot of homeless people and shit like that. Yeah. So, you know, I'd go and have these conversations that would lead to nowhere while my clients like waiting. So I told him like, I'll hire the assistant. Part of their job will be answering the door, answering the phone. Uh, if you want them to set you up and break you down, we'll make it that job right. and I'll pay their salary. And you know, the boss was like, um, no, I don't, I don't want you to have an assistant, but I will hire someone to do all that stuff and you can pay for them. <laughs> and I was like, how the fuck did we get He's from like, I have an even better yeah. idea yeah. for me. Yeah. It, it was crazy. And like when he first said it, I was like, how does that make sense? Like, does that make yeah. sense to you? And he was like, yeah, you know, it sounds like your biggest complaint is having to get up and answer the door and answer the phone. I was like, that's not my biggest complaint at all. Yeah. So he still stuck by, no, I don't want you to have an assistant. And I understood that and respected it. I was like, all right, that's fine. But that means I'm going. Like, right. I, you know, eventually, <laughs> like, that means that I, I have to figure something else out. Uh, and did that produce, like, kind of like a, a sour taste? Yeah, there were a lot of things uh, that were kind of, like, building up to that. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, the little that I know, it sounds like maybe you were starting to outgrow th the space already. Right. And that maybe that was like the last straw. Yeah, it was a lot of that. And I think a, a big part too is like one of my biggest things is I hate being in, in the way of anyone. Like right. I, like I never, right. right. I never want to burden anyone with just me being in there. I get it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it started to feel like, you know, I would go up to everybody on like Friday and be like, Hey, are you going to be in Saturday and walk around and, if I got a no from everyone, it was like, oh, cool, I can film this week. You know, yeah. we would get there at like 6, 7 a.m. just to for sure be done filming before anyone could possibly be there. Uh, and then it kind of felt like the the boss didn't like that, too. And, yeah. you know, started uh, showing up at like 8 a.m. on Sundays. And it was like, why are you here? Yeah. Like, yeah. And I don't know. It was just little things that I was like, okay, no matter what I do, I'm going to be in the way in this shop. So it's time to like do my own thing where I can say, Hey, no one's allowed to be here, you know, until noon. <laughs> don't on Don't come while yeah. I'm filming. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know if, if this is the experience that you're describing, but I, I noticed that myself as well before, um, opening my own shop that when I was like trying new ideas, like, like with you, the skits, it wasn't skits for me then, but like new ideas and like growing and maybe in a sense outgrowing right. some of the people at the shop. Um, a lot of people like hated on it, thought it was weird, maybe even told me not to do that and almost felt like they were trying to push me back down. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely get that. I, uh, cause there was a, a phase cause I, I worked with a girl that, uh, she's actually coming over to the shop. She makes videos for TikTok. She does really well and she's just authentically herself. They're not skits. It's just yeah. basically like, a day in the life of tattooing, right? Uh, so she was always making content, and uh, everybody that kind of worked there was was all very comfortable with that, which was part of the reason I moved there, because the shop I was at before, the worst thing you could do was make a video and post it on the internet. Yeah? It, they were, like, way too above that. They were and, really cool. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... You use uh, hashtags, bro? Ex exactly. Oh, here. Yeah. So we ended up getting this new guy at that shop who came from, like, a, a, you know, a really good shop, and then he moved to Fresno or whatever. And it was, like, everything I did was the epitome of the shit he hated. I would post a, a photo online, and he'd have some shit to talk about right. like that because he was just too good for all of it. But so I move over to this shop, and they're all cool with creating, and then I start making videos. And then the boss started making videos, like, you know, at the same time that I did. Was it, like, weird? Like, when your dad tries to do something you do? <laughs> <It> was, yeah. <laughs> You're like, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's good. That's good. Right. <laughs> but the one that got me was, I, like, they, they were just all talking. <laughs> Like, keep it up, Dad. I'm yeah. proud of your effort. I yeah. learned that. Your dad's like, I'm on skinny <laughs> jeans, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, we were talking one day about, like, just ideas that we had. And not that it was that original of an idea, but I was like, oh, yeah. And then one of the videos I'm going to do is going to be a dream. And I'm going to wake up from the dream or whatever. And uh, the next day, the boss posted it, like, made a video and posted it. And it was him, you know, waking up from a dream. Yeah. I was like, well, cool. Now I got to wait, like, a couple weeks, yeah. you know, to post mine. But, you know, 
whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I came here not planning on talking any shit uh, on like that shop. Do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we can cut it out. Right. <laughs> no, so the artist that's coming and joining me is like the nicest human you will ever meet. And the, okay, so the shop that I'm coming from is like in downtown Fresno which is as bad as it sounds, right? We're, we're like the <laughs> meth <laughs> capital. <laughs> right. It's rough. It's rough. Wait, wait, meth capital? Meth capital. What's, like, bad the, about it, though? The, the, the meth? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't personally <laughs> know. <laughs> Actually, no, it's a great yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the state capital? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Fresno is just, like, bad for crime, and it's, it's, like, the most affordable place to live in California. Okay. So, I mean, that naturally brings its own, right. you know, problems or whatever to it so um but where we were uh ha we had like a nice little overhang in front of the shop which meant homeless people slept under it which right. like, i'm not even trying to hate on homeless people right. but like that's just a thing with tattoo shops totally for some reason yeah mm -hmm. they're like oh these people are cool which yeah. maybe is a compliment <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure <laughs> she just walked over damn instantly like, kick me <laughs> out at least let me say my speech you know? yeah hey. yeah but it like always smelled like piss in the front of yeah. the shop and like There'd be shit on our door. Yeah. And okay. I was always the first one in. So it was like, okay, it's not totally my responsibility to clean that. But right. my client's going to be here before the boss is. So. Yeah, I live here too. Yeah. So I got to clean. I got to <laughs> clean that shit. So, um, but yeah. So the, the artist that's coming over, her husband was like, hey, why don't you move to Woody's shop? Because it's in a much safer part of town. She had a knife pulled on her at, at you know, the previous shop. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so one day, uh, you know, she brought up the idea. She's like, hey, would you ever have me over there? I was like, yeah, absolutely. However, like, I feel bad doing that to the boss. And uh, she was like, yeah, you know, me too. We'll talk about it. Well, when she finally told him, like, hey, you know, I think it's the best thing for me to move over with Woody too, he was like, cool, pack your shit. Yeah, yeah. And he <laughs> was like, fuck. Like, <laughs> like yeah. he was such a good dude before that. So, I don't know. It was just a, a weird thing and. So, yeah, so now I get to tell the authentic version of everything instead <laughs> sure. of being like A plus time, you know. Yeah. How long has the shop been open? Your uh, shop? My shop? Yeah. Like uh, 15 days? 18 nice. days? Yeah. It's a while now. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're pretty, yeah. you know, pretty deep. <laughs> pretty better now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's uh, that in dog ears? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we, uh, how many uh, stations does your shop have? Uh, so we have. I should know this. Let's see. One, two, <laughs> three, four. We have six booths in the front room, and then we have, like, a private booth in the back. Yeah. And what we're thinking for the private booth in the back is, like, permanent makeup because it makes a little more sense if someone wants to get their eyebrows done. They don't have to be around, like, you know, sure. five other rowdy tattooers. So got a nice little space back there. Um, and then we haven't announced this anywhere, but my wife is apprenticing under me. So nice. yeah. hey. congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, so that's been our first two weeks is, like, I've never taught anybody. I'm only six years professionally into tattooing, so part of me even wonders, like, am I even ready to show someone, you know, what to do? So um, I was like, why not start with my wife? Where yeah. <laughs> I think that the fact that you're questioning your own ability uh, shows humility and is right. a good thing. Yeah, for you sure. Know? For sure. It might be a little worrisome if you're like, well, since I'm the best in the <laughs> yeah. fucking world. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of my like biggest worries about opening a shop was being the best in the shop. Because every shop that I've ever worked at, I've been dog shit compared to everybody right, else. Right. So, and I, I think that uh, that really helped me grow. Even when I was at the shop before this last one, like legitimately everyone in there was killers and I was like why did they hire me like am I the <laughs> like walk-in guy that's just gonna get shit on all day so I just pushed quick and like every time someone was tattooing I'd just be over their shoulder like hey what are you doing yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do you do that and yeah in like three years I, I grew a lot from that so and then when this girl Hannah decided to come over to the shop I was like okay cool I'm safe I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm already not the best in there so so yeah, that was that was a big worry, but we'll see. Yeah, I need to be around great tattooers if possible, because um, yeah, it's like you said, like who who are you gonna learn from, right? Right. Uh, my experience, like being young and working in new shops, was I would day one try to find out who I thought the best artist was in the shop, and my goal was to become better than them. Nice. Um, and, you know, sometimes that bar was pretty low, depending, yeah. on, depending right. on the shop. Right. Uh, but, and you know, whether 
I did become better than them or not, the journey of trying made me better. Right. That's like what I'm getting at. For sure. Uh, and that's why I think it's so important to have like guest artists as well. Yeah. You know, even if it's for like a week, maybe I can't have this person come be a resident artist, but I can at least get them here for a week and I can, you know, bother them for a yeah, week. You know? For sure. Yeah. One of our booths is going to be a permanent guest spot booth just because like in this last year I've gotten to travel all over the country and meet a ton yeah. of tattooers and um, they're always like oh yeah and then I'll come out to Fresno and I'm like Google Fresno first right. like, maybe, like, <laughs> Google it see if it's worth it yeah <laughs> but we're like right down the street from Yosemite which is like yeah. the shit yeah. so if people are into nature I can, cool. I can sell them on that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you climb shit or? yeah yeah <laughs> do you like home people <laughs> yeah. bears yeah. 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 heights <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think that'll be cool. And, um, you know, just since posting up, like, you know, hey, if, if you want to come guest at the shop, like, that'll be, you know, available in the future. People from, like, Ireland are hitting me yeah. up, like, wanting to do it. And so that'll be it'll be cool. Yeah. So What are some of your biggest fears with the new shop? Oh, man. That's a good question. I haven't even thought about fears. Uh, I <laughs> Sorry. I no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm scared you're right here. <laughs> yeah. Uh well, I mean I, I think so with <laughs> when I had my vape shops, one of the reasons that it ended was because I got sued like six times in a row. Yeah. yeah so I, I think that's naturally like a, a concern with it. Like I've seen I got lucky and I, I sold one of my vape shops and that pretty much made it to where I could exit yeah. easily. Um and then the second one I was going to sell it to some guys that ended up, I had to, they were like, oh, can we see your lease agreement? And without me thinking, I just gave them the whole thing. And they saw that my lease was up in three months. So they were like, ah, oh, we're fuck. just going to wait them out. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's what they did. Uh, yeah. So didn't sell that one. And then, uh, yeah, closed down the third one. But wasn't even planning on selling until all the lawsuits came in of like, it was batteries exploding and, you know, stuff like that. Gotcha. So I think that's my fear is like something that, just like you could, could never plan for just yeah. happening and, you know, taking it down. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's really the biggest thing. Or like, I don't know, the artists that come and work, hiring new people, you're going to be around that person like more than anyone else in your life. Correct. So hiring those people and hoping they're great, you know, to work with. Hopefully they're, they're cool tattooers as well, but I'd much rather have good people in the shop. So I think that's a worry finding the right people to work there. Yeah. Yeah, that's another reason why we do guest spots. If we do have someone who's interested, like, in right. working for the shop, like, all right, come spend a week with us. You know, you got to feel us out, and we got to fill you out. For sure. But what do you do if they, like, if they work here in town at another shop? You know, they can't really, you know, come do a guest spot without having to quit their other shop, right? We just do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> just like, fuck. <laughs> like, <talk laughs> guest spot. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting. People do guest spot. At like local shops, it's like a weird thing right. that happens here. I know it doesn't happen in like Just Jersey or like other places I'm from, <laughs> but in we, I've, and I think, you know, at least Danny and like other people have really tried to let everyone around know that like we're here to participate in the tattoo community, right? Whether it's like having parties and inviting other shops, going out with other shops, like attending sponsorship events, hitting up other shops, like, yo, you going? Like, and it's kind of a nice atmosphere. Right. And, like, even, like, with myself opening a new shop, like, I've hit up some of my boys that own other shops, and I'm like, hey, you know, if you know any artists, like, let me know. Right on. Um, but I think that relationship was built through, like, yo, if I have a day off, like, I drive to my boy's shop, and I'm, like, just checking in with everyone, or a different shop, or other shop. Right. Um, you know, I had... A, a guy come in say he was opening a shop and he wanted help and to be honest my first reaction was like I don't really want to help you that's a lot of work and like I got yeah. enough shit on my plate but I was like whatever and I helped him bro we're like really good friends now nice. you know yeah. and like I'm happy that I did that and like didn't listen to my first thought but kind of cultivating these relationships to right. and and followed by action like I'm not just saying we're part of it like I'm acting into it we're part of the community around here. You know, when we have an open door policy, 
If you want to be here, awesome. If you don't, that's totally fine. Just be honest. Yeah. You can even stay here until you, your next shop is ready. Right. And we've proven that time and time again. One of the artists here, um, you know, I've fired three times and he's come back. Yeah. Another one. You was know, that Adrian? No, like, oh. no <laughs> yeah, yeah, Adrian yeah, I fired yeah, once. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, and then like uh, one of the other artists um, had said like, hey, I have this really great opportunity at another shop. And I'm like, yo, go follow Yeah. Him. He did it for like two years and then it just wasn't for him. He came back and like that's a regular thing that happens here. Right. And I feel like it's all about like not burning the bridge and like kind of taking like my ego and like my own agenda out of it and being like, okay, what you're trying to do is like pursue your own career. Let me help you. Let me not be a fucking dick bag right. and worry about my own shit. Let me just help you. Like cool other artists, like you think this is going to advance your career. Let me help you get there. Yeah. You know? And, oh, yeah. and I think it's helped out a lot with that. Um, but yeah, I think the hardest part of owning a business is dealing with the people. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. At one point with the vape shops, I had 13 employees and we were like all, I've always hated the like, Oh, we're like family except for like with that shop. It actually felt like these people came over on the weekends and kicked it. And, yeah. You know, and that was, that was cool. And it's like, I hope to get back to that again. Cause I've never felt that way at a tattoo shop. Right. I've always felt like this is work and I love my job, but I'm not trying to, you know, have you over to my birthday, <laughs> right, you know? Right. <laughs> uh, so like part of me wonders. There's only so many pieces of a cake. Yeah, you know exactly. And I want most of them. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah. So I, I like, I kind of want that, you know, I, I want people to, you know, feel comfortable enough that they could talk to me about anything. Yeah. Um, Cause I've never worked at a shop that I felt a hundred percent like, yeah, I, I can say how I feel yeah. about something. So I do want that, you know, for, for everyone. Um, yeah. You know, I like that question of like, what am I most afraid of? Cause it's making me answer a lot of those questions. Cause I put those blinders on. Yeah. I was like, it's time to open the shop. We have two months. Let's get it. You know, let's make right. it happen. Cause yeah. my biggest fear is always like the unknown, right? Like, what's going to happen that I don't have the experience for and I'm not prepared for. Yeah. And then I freak out <laughs> and I try to get every form of preparation done yeah. that I can. It's usually like overkill. Right. We never even use some of it, but I think the reality is like that unknown stuff. It's just going to be unknown for and sure. it's going to come up. And like what I can do pr to prepare for that is just always be like the best version of me. Right. Like yeah. make sure like even basic stuff, like I have good sleep, like I'm treating the people around me, you know, with care and kindness. Um, I'm not making rash decisions. I'm not reacting, you know, to emotions. Right. Uh, I have a good team. You know, I have fucking lawyers, I yeah. have, you know, whatever it <laughs> yeah. is, you know. Yeah. I, I like that. Just being, you know, as prepared as you can be for when those things come up. And like forgiving myself when I make a mistake. Right. Because that's a hundred percent going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And and yeah. the best I can do is just not make the same mistakes. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think it took me a long time to get with that because when I opened this shop, every week was the end of the world. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, yeah. bro, like because uh, I was 24 when I opened this. I had no fucking life experience. It was probably way too early for, for me to do that. And like all the tattooers that worked here were older than me and I've been tattooing longer and, like, oh, they would yeah. say, like, one little thing, like, I'm trying to think, like, oh, the autoclave, we have shit. And then I'd be like, yeah. And then I'd go home, and I'd be like, I got to get a new autoclave. Everyone at the shop knows that I'm not prepared to open, you know, whatever yeah. it was. Or, like, the fire alarm would go off, and, and I'd get fined. and I'd be like, they're going to kick me out of the building. Yeah. I'm going to lose the whole shop. Blah, blah, blah. Damn. When did that go away? How many years in? <sighs> I think I prolonged it because I had a partner. Why well, two partners? Okay. And I, when that stuff would happen, I would like put it on them. Like, please help. Please help. Like okay. I'm young. I don't know what I'm doing. Please help. And I don't think it went away until I actually like took responsibility and started like providing the solutions, you know, as an right. owner. And I was so scared to do that, that I like put it off for a while, you know? Interesting. But I think once I started doing that and like realized that I could rely on myself and gain that confidence, 
it was gone, you know? Yeah. Because then, I don't know, a few years later, I had a day where I had, like, 13 artists leave in one day. Like, the wow. whole shop mutiny. They're like, we're leaving, oh, we're yeah. leaving. And I'm just tattooing. I'm like, bye. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, Damn. like, because I had... Like, I had it at that point. Yeah. You know, I was like, yo, we're good. You were good knowing like 13 people are just abandoning ship. Yeah. I think if <sighs> anything, bro, it like fueled me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Cause I got just so tired of living in fear. Yeah. Cause, uh, dude, uh, for like two years, like I was just fueled on fear. I was running on fear. Oh my God. What if this happens? What if I lose the shop? Right. And then like, I started, you know, with the advice of like older people doing the things I was afraid of, like being courageous, walking through it, like actually talking to the landlord, like figuring out the like stop hiding. Yeah. And I was like breaching, make, creating my own independence, you know, and, and learning that I could rely on myself. And then w when those opportunities would come, it would like fuel me like. This is awesome that a mistake is happening because I'm going to learn and this shit is never going to fucking happen again. Right. You know, or like, that's cool. I'm scared right now. Like, I'm going to push through it. And then like the greatest fear of mine came true. Everyone in the shop left. Yeah. You know, and like really what it came down to was like through my own tattoos and my own abilities, like I could pay the rent. Right. I'd be fine. Yeah. I knew how to operate. And it kind of gave me like a clean slate because there were some issues, obviously, with the shop. If everyone's going to leave, it's not because everything's yeah, good. For, you know? for sure. And I was like, cool, I can rebuild this. I can build it with the new knowledge I have, you know, and it's ne and and honestly, that's when we started to kind of take right. off. Yeah, because you, you know? had seen the end of it. You saw yeah. your, yeah, that, yeah, that's interesting. I took like one day to lick my tiny wounds. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. And, uh, <laughs> do, do, do. Write that down. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Trademark. And I, I mourned it. I felt bad for myself for about 12 hours. And then I was like, all right, let's go. Let's kick nice. it into gear. You know? Yeah. I think th that is a cool feeling, too, that, like, we don't need any artists to ever move into the shop and we can afford the rent. And right. that's cool. So that fear hopefully will never be realized as long as, you know, I stay, stay busy. Um, but... You know, yeah, so I do get to be picky with bringing people in. I'm not just trying to let As anyone. you should be, I yeah, think. For sure. Yeah, I, I think I want to go into it with the goal that, like, everyone that we bring into the shop is better than me. Like, cool. that, yeah, that's what yeah. I want. Um, I think that'll make me feel really comfortable in there. Like, cool, this isn't the place where I have reached my peak of tattooing ability, and I'll never go higher yeah. than that because, you know, I, I want to see it get a lot better than this. And I think having, like a very good understanding of what your shop represents, what the rules are and what the expectations are yeah, is good. Maybe you already do that. I did not have that for so long. I just kind of wanted to be liked by everyone in the shop. Um, I wanted to be like friends with them. And the reality is all the great shops I've worked at are the shops that I felt safe at. And the reason that I felt safe at those shops is because I felt like I could rely on the owner and they were a strong individual, Nice, you know, so and maybe it's different for other people, but that was like my mentality. So here at the shop, like I want to show that strength in a way that like I have a plan. When you guys are scared, we have a plan. These are the rules. I've spent a long time thinking about the rules because this is what's going to keep the shop open. If I anyone breaches those rules, like it's just not going to work. Right. And trying to get rid of those people as fast as possible, you know, and then. I think it just produces a better work environment instead right. of trying to like be everyone's friend. It's like, no, I'm going to be like a leader. Yeah. You know, for sure. And I, th I think that helps out a lot with the dynamic like that. Do you, you feel that way? Like at the shop? Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. It's super important. Like yeah. who you hire. I've been here for over two years now. So I've seen like the crew rotate, I guess. Like, yeah. And definitely like seeing that the crew now that we've built, is definitely like of a higher uh, standard than before, and it only like continues to like slowly get higher and higher too. That's cool. And you kind of just like weed out, you know. They, I feel like people weed themselves out. To be honest, right. if you have like a crew of fourteen people and thirteen of them get along, that one person's just gonna finally find their way out. For sure. So it just like slowly gets better like that. But I used to be scared when we'd have a new artist to be like, uh. These are the shop rules. Yeah. Um, if you don't like it, it's okay. We can yeah. change it. Yeah. 
But like it, that shit don't work. Yeah. Because yeah. then we'd have artists that like crushed numbers, like made so much money, but they fucking suck. Yeah. Like as a person. As a right. person. And yeah. they would, and that disease just spreads right. in the shop, and like battling with that, and, and now it's no question, you're out. Like yeah. you're hurting the whole shop. Yeah. Like this is for real, the fucking family. And like I will never like put money. Like before that, right. yeah. Once know? it starts fucking with like chemistry, it starts. To oh, become, dude, yeah. it's the worst. And it's crazy now, as you said, because I've seen that too. Where it is like, some artists find that like if they make the numbers, they think they belong, and it's right. not always the case. Right. You know. Yeah, they think that it just trumps everything. And yeah, they they're like, oh, I make my else. numbers. I do what I want. I treat people how I want yeah. to. I treat my clients how I want to. It yeah. just really doesn't work like that. And sometimes it's tricky because they come in awesome and then it, like, yeah. changes. Yeah, like, they come in great. <laughs> or they're, like, people I looked up to as an apprentice. And then by the time I, like, tattoo and I'm like, wow, this person sucks. Yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it's a direct result of the money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you see them come in humble, whatever, and then they start yeah. crushing it. You know, they fucking... Yeah. Get new, like, shoes, jewelry, houses, cars, and then they're better than everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Damn. Yeah. yeah. It becomes, uh, like, you know, quantity versus quality, which is my biggest fucking Yeah, for thing. sure. 100%. I hate that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, dude, I did a whole sleeve. I'm like, yeah, it looks like shit, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that what I did in a day. <laughs> right. It doesn't make it any better. <laughs> Seriously. Can you take photos of it? <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, I've had people worst. come up to me and they're like... Whatever, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, I go on. Um, they're like, you know, I only worked for a half hour, charged this much. I'm like, don't do that, bro. <laughs> yeah. That's not a flex. Yeah. Like, go give money back. Yeah. Yeah. Go say sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, apologize to they them. They have a family. <laughs> yeah. And like, that's why I think communication is like so important. Like when an artist is hired, like we sit them down, me and all management. And we're like, these are the expectations, right. you know, and they're the same for everyone. So there's like no way you can be like, oh, I didn't know, you yeah. know. Interesting. I like that. Just like clear. And with the clients, too. You know what I mean? Like even in like my booking policies, it's like very clear. It's like, do not put the deposit down unless you're 100 yeah. percent sure on the day. Because my thing is like, even if you change a day, no matter what, you lose your deposit. Even if like interesting, yeah. Even if family members die, if yeah. fucking military comes in, like it's just what it is. Right, um, <laughs> it yeah. just happened. That's why I brought <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like I'm like I, I'm not trying to steal your money. Right. This is just how the rules are, you know, and yeah. and whatever, whatever. And I think I used to be afraid to say that earlier in tattooing because I'm like, oh, what if they don't book with me? Yeah. What if they don't like me? You know. There's a million other people that will take their spot, you right. know, and yeah, I, I have a, a tough time with that because like I've always had a hard time if someone's like, oh, you know, it's my mom's funeral or whatever right. that day, you know, I'll, I'll always move it. Right. But people lie about that shit all the time. Like, Correct. Yeah. During COVID, it was always You like, don't say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. your sixth mom, man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did have somebody lie about that one saying that their mom passed away. Yeah, I had yeah, someone yeah. lie about their dad. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I yeah. got upset. Yeah, that shit's cool in school, but here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, like, have some respect. <laughs> Say, like, your <laughs> aunt or something, yeah. bro. Grandma. Not that close to home, yeah. dude. You're Don't like, put Yo, that on it's your cool. mom. I'll do the portrait for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and I, I have that worry. So, uh, I have all these things to where, like, you know, you, you lose it if you reschedule twice. Like, you know, yeah. I'll always let there be one. But if it's the second time they're rescheduling the same appointment, I'm like, sorry. Right. You know, now you got to wait because my booking's awful. It's garbage. It only opens up like once a year. And then I book out the year and I'm like, hey, now you got to wait. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Interesting. It yeah. sucks. I haven't figured out like the right way to do it because then I get people all year either. long that yeah. are like, you're too hard to book with. Like, but I'm not. You just have to wait for the one time, you know, that you can book. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah. But I've. I don't know. It's, it's all learning and then like bringing the whole internet part into this. And like, uh, I had a buddy that like went viral back in the day when like the sacred geometry thing was like kind of new Yeah, and he blew up all over Instagram. Yeah. So he had people booking with him from all over the world right. and he took each and every one of them, got them an appointment and then sacred geometry just kind of like went away a little bit. Like it's still, yeah. you know, around, but not like it was. And nobody wanted to book with him anymore locally because they were like, dude, we've been trying to get in with you for three years. Yeah. So 
when the first couple videos that I did started blowing up and people started hitting me up from all over the country wanting to come in, I was like, oh, close my books. Yeah. Because now, like, using him as an example, this is going to make it way too hard for my Fresno people to ever get a spot yeah. again. So I'm just going to, you know, close it up. And then, you know, my wife and I sat down and realized, like, oh, now we can travel and go be busy in whatever state we want to kind yeah. of all over. Mm-hmm. And, like, that, that works out. So... I've kind of catered my booking now to be like only for the people close enough. Like hey, if you can get in in the next two days, like you can get it. Yeah. I'm try to keep it fair. I'm always like picking other artists brain about their like booking policies. One really interesting um, version I came across uh, in France actually was dude will book out three weeks every month and leave a week open every month. To like oh. put in like quick clients. Interesting. I don't do that, but it yeah, was like, it's, it's, it was cool. Oh, right. But like seeing that and like tailoring it because they're your policies, right. right? Like I might have zero tolerance for reschedule, but maybe it doesn't bother you. For oh, some God, reason, it like makes me have <laughs> yeah, a seizure. Yeah, for you sure. You know? For um, sure. But just like, you know, maybe Cam. Uh, prefers to work in like half days rather than full days or, yeah. you know, you just want to do bookings one day a year or whatever it is. Right. You know, but like constantly, ter- I update mine, if not every year, every six months, you yeah. know, this, that tweak this or whatever. Sometimes I get upset and I'm like, you know, put this specifically <laughs> <Yeah>. in there <laughs> you know? right. or, or whatever. No mom is. dies. But I, yeah. Re- yeah. I want to talk about the skits. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> because obviously I can relate. Right. Uh, and it's like fun and new. But where was that like born? Uh, so it was really, it, it's kind of a lame answer, but I just realized Instagram was no longer sharing my photos yeah. anywhere. Uh, and I was doing an art show, I was just participating in it. And uh, the guy was always cool if we like pre sold the art that was going to be there because he had a hard time selling art. So I was like, great. So I posted my pieces up and I put, hey, these are all for sale. If anyone, you know, wants them, shoot me a message. And I, you know, let let the story ride. Uh, and like two hours later, I was like, oh, it's kind of weird. Like no one's even like hit me up about it or asked questions. And I looked and only like 40 people have seen it out of the like, you know, however right. many thousand followers. So I was like, okay, something's wrong. Like what's going on? So I Googled it. I looked around, you know, and kind of all the forums and whatnot and realized that one of the biggest mistakes I made was saying, using the words for sale. And at the time, Instagram was promoting Instagram shopping. So if you were selling something outside of their shopping, they, they shadow banned it, whatever. So I was like, okay, that's problem number one. And then everything else that I read was like, if you're not posting videos, you're just going to get, you know, buried. So I always kind of had the idea. I used to do those things where I'm like, hey, ask me a question, you know, and I'll respond to it, you know, and be silly. And people would always ask like, oh, what's something you've always wanted to tattoo that you've like never gotten to? I'm like, well, if I want to tattoo something, I'll draw it. I'll make it flash. I'll make it available. So but I was like, that is the lamest answer I could give someone. So I just sat, sat and thought like, what's something funny that I could say I've always wanted to tattoo that no one's going to get? So I said, like, yeah, I've always wanted to tattoo a unicorn with a corn dog horn, right. a unicorn dog. Yeah. And I posted that up, and I got, like, 70 messages of people, like, I want a unicorn corn dog <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, book I'll it. be there in five yeah. minutes. <laughs> so I was like, oh, shit. So that was kind of like a running joke that I would always do in those yeah. little little video things. And people that had been following me from, since my first 1,000 followers would be like, nice, like, the unicorn yeah, dog's yeah. back. So when, <laughs> here we go again. Yeah, like a little <laughs> unicorn duck. So when the, uh, so I had the idea, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna write out the whole script where guy comes in, asks for a tattoo, and says like, do whatever you want. And I'm like, do whatever I want. Right. Like, oh, okay. And then whatever. I yeah, want. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, and then I'll dr- finally draw the unicorn dog that I've been joking about for years, and you know that'll be it. So I made the whole skit. And uh, there was one day, it was a weekend, my wife was busy doing something, and I was like, okay, I'm going to sneak to the shop and film this, because I don't want, you know, like, God forbid anyone catches me filming this thing, like, <laughs> you know, I'm going to sneak in there, I'll get it filmed, and I'm going to edit it. And it was like the dead of winter, well, it's January, but it's cold in Fresno, and so I shot over to the shop, had to turn the heater off, because it was like, boom, in right. the background. <laughs> so I'm freezing, trying to, like, film this skit, 
I get it all filmed, and then I sit down to edit it, and I haven't edited a video since high school. Right. So I'm sitting down, I'm, like, doing the edits in Instagram, and then, you know, I finish it up, and it's at, like, a minute and 18 seconds. So I was like, shit, I got I to gotta edit gotta out 18, 18 seconds yeah. off this. So I try, and I can't. I can't cut anything out. So I'm like, okay, I have to film it again, but I just got to condense everything, speed yeah. it up a bit. Talk a little fast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. cut out the, uh, I would like to get whatever right. you want. Right. So I, like, refilmed it, shot both sides, sat down again, edited, minute eight seconds. Oh, uh, it was like, God damn it. Yeah. Like, okay. That's my daily fucking <laughs> struggle, <laughs> Everything. Like, yeah. The story gets lost, and you're like, Right. I'm like, what isn't crucial? Like, what can I cut out and still get it across? So I uh, uh, was like, okay, I got to film it one more time. So I film it. I get it down to 59 seconds. And I'm like, we've we've done it. Right. So I I press next. And then the little loading bar comes up on on the screen. And I'm sitting. I'm watching. It's taking a minute. I'm like, all right, I'll set my phone down and, like, clean up, you know, put all my shit away. So, like, five minutes later, I go to my phone. It's still doing the little loading bar. I'm like, something's wrong. Right. <laughs> so, I exit out of the app. Oh. I, oh. Oh, do we know something I don't? <laughs> I bring it back up. Crashed. The whole video's gone. So, I'm like, okay, one more time. So, I sit down. I, I edit it again. Like, 58 seconds. I'm getting better, right? right? So, I go. I press next. It goes to the next screen. And I'm like, why don't we add a little music in the background? Like, make it, you know, have Funk a little thing. Up. Loading bar comes up, it's, it's there, it's spinning. I'm like, oh God, it did it again. So I'm mad. Yeah. I am so mad. Uh, so I message my wife and I like update her on what's going on. And she's fucking spinning <laughs> bar. <man. laughs> and she's like, okay, well, you know, you can edit it. So you, you can do that here. Like, you don't have to be in the cold shop. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, come home. Uh, so I was like, yeah, great idea. So I shoot home <clears throat> and, uh, I'm editing the video and it crashes again and I'm losing my mind and I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to enjoy my weekend. I'm not going to let this ruin my time. So I got to the couch. I'm sitting there like, no, I'm having a good time. I'm going to have a good time. Like I got to edit it again. (laughs) I got, I I got to get this done. So, um, same thing. And then I, it hits me that I have a client who's really big on TikTok. She does yoga. Yeah. So I'm like, She's my guru. I got to know. I hit her up. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to make this video. Don't tell anyone. Like, right. you know, it's kind of dumb. <laughs> if you tell anyone, I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. I was like, but I'm not showing it to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, I cannot get this to work. Like, what am I doing wrong? And she's like, oh, you can't edit in Instagram. You got to use like the secondary app and then like upload it. Oh, shit. She's like, that's what I figured. Yeah. I like, yeah. wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, just what app? Yeah. Like, yeah, I just want to know which one you What's like your favorite <laughs> yeah. one? So I go and I edit it. And at this point I can edit the video down in like a minute just because I know where everything's, you know, needs to <laughs> go. A lot of practice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I get it all edited. Everything's 57 good. seconds. Though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I get all done and I, I go out and she's like, you get it done? I'm like, yeah, I had to use some other app. She's like, okay, did you post it? I was like, no, nah, I'll wait till later. <laughs> like it's not a good hour. Right. Uh, so I wait till later and oh I, I should probably say like i had never used tiktok at this point i'd only right. ever used instagram um not for any reason other than i hate wasting time and all i've ever heard about tiktok is it's like the best way to waste a bunch of hours right. so i was just never on it but uh i had an account just to like reserve my name basically yeah. so uh i don't know five o'clock comes or whatever i thought the right hour was and i post the video on instagram and it starts just doing really well and i'm having fun like commenting back to people right. and you know whatnot and having a good time and a couple hours goes by it's at like four thousand views and i'm like holy shit yeah, like, yeah yeah uh and then my wife goes like hey like i'm i'm on tiktok right now and i cannot find the video like it's not on your page i was like oh i didn't even post it on there <laughs> like yeah. you know no big deal <laughs> she's like you spent the whole half of the morning like trying to make this video it's going to take you 20 seconds to upload that to tiktok like just do it and i was like okay so i upload it to tiktok and then i write on my instagram story like hey it's on tiktok you know if you want to go follow me on there so um every hour she's like hey uh, how many views are you at so i'm like oh six thousand or whatever and she's like oh what about on uh tiktok and i go to tiktok and i'm like oh to 19 views like yeah. you know, watch <laughs> out so uh, we go to bed and she's like uh all right last time before bed like you know what's it out on tiktok and i look up and i'm like 
damn, it's at like 194 views. Like, right. you know, right. watch out. So we go to go to bed. I wake up the next morning. I check on Instagram. I'm at like 17, 18,000 views. Yeah. Like just, wow, what? how does this even happen? Uh, an hour goes by. I'm drinking my coffee. I'm like, oh, yeah, I posted that on TikTok. Like, what do we add on TikTok? I go over there. It's at like 200,000 views. Yeah, yeah. It's like, that's wrong. So I refresh. It's like 210,000 right, views. Like, right, it's right. Just like, <laughs> so it like caught fire that morning and I was like holy shit and I just keep updating and you know as yeah. we've all done just watch that number grow uh so finally uh when she wakes up I I go in there I'm like hey guess how many views the uh the video's at and she's like oh how many I'm like oh 300 she's like nice thousand views oh! yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's like what it, what do you mean like call my yeah, agent yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly so uh it, funny enough, it was actually my dad's birthday, like, uh, coincidentally, and it was the year he retired with just last year, so I was taking him out to get tools. He wanted to learn how to do things with tools. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, we, like, we're out shopping, and every, every once in a while, he's like, hey, how many views your video? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's cool. Yeah, so it was a, a fun little moment. But, yeah, I had only ever planned on making that one video. That was yeah. my only idea. Uh, and then, once again, uh, the wife was like, Hey, you should do one where someone asks for a dragonfly, but, you know, it's a fly, like a dragon. Right. right. I was like, I'll go draw that right now. Right. <laughs> I can't not use yeah. that idea. Like, yeah. That is a very good idea. <laughs> so, like, a week later, I posted that up, and then that one did even better. And then just from there, they all just skyrocketed and, and went really well. And, yeah, it was wild. Yeah. Never, never planned on it. Because I found out about you through TikTok. Okay. Um, cause we had like one of my clients who I actually, we brought on the podcast and introduced as my most inappropriate client, Chuck. I listened to that one. I, I okay. yeah. yeah. Well, sorry for that. that yeah. was a while. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, he wanted, he was having fun doing videos and we did the turtleneck yeah. video yeah, yeah. and then someone, uh, all these people were like tagging you and they're like, Oh, you Dude. know, what he would like this, what he would like this. And, and I didn't, I didn't know anything. And then I saw like all the puns and I was like, this is cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when that happened, I, I was golfing with my dad when you posted that video. Cause I like normally never check my phone when I'm yeah. out golfing, but my pocket was going nuts. It was like, bzz, 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 bzz. <laughs> right. like what is going on? Like yeah. what's happening? So I opened it up, and it was just your video and everybody tagging me in it. And then there were messages coming to me on, on like, other apps, like, yo, this dude's talking shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, they're in there trying to start shit, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And Which I'll, is good for us. Yeah, right. You know? yeah. I was like, okay, like, that, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, and they were like, no, like, you, you got to clap back, dude. Like, what, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't think I'm the clap back guy. <laughs> I don't think that's I'm the my tiny brand. wounds guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I was like, I'm not trying to start any war because yeah. I'm not going to be good at it. <laughs> like, let's just not. Well, dude, honestly, that I was well, I I don't remember the time, but I f still felt like really new to TikTok. We and, were, yeah, was and my video. experience with TikTok was just crazy hate, right? Right. <laughs> And, uh, like, yeah. everyone, like, clapping back, you know? Yeah. And, and artists, too. And it was kind of discouraging. And because I'm, I'm not that guy either, bro. Right. Mainly because, like, I'm not spending time and energy on that ever. For you sure. You know, especially, like, rival relationships or, like, enemy relationships. It, it, cool, man. Video wasn't for you then. Like, yeah. fuck Keep off. scrolling. Yeah. Um, That's why we have and, Adrian, man. And the fact, <laughs> the fact that, like, you didn't. It yeah. actually gave me respect for you. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's cool. Because, like, I've, even though I don't really portray this on the internet, I've always been like, yo, let's bond together. Like, we're all in this together, tattoo artists. Right. So I really appreciated to not see anything back. Awesome. And, like, I, <laughs> like, just from my own ignorance, like, I didn't know until that point that, like, that was, like, your thing. Oh, like, right. Okay. And then, <laughs> like, seeing everyone, like, tag, because I've had a couple of videos uh, in different circumstances where they're, like, always tagging someone else. Right. And then that person hates on me. And, like, to be it, from it, I just, I don't know these other people, you right. know? And then not seeing a retaliation from you, like, I clicked on your page, and I was like, 
oh, this is cool stuff. <laughs> but I'm sure if you did, I'd be like, fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome. I, I just always like to think like, oh, maybe that was done in good faith. Like maybe that's just like, you know, a fun thing. And uh, what was kind of funny is when I watched your videos, I was like, there's there's one of two things. Either this guy is like, you know, this <laughs> mean asshole that he plays online or he's the nicest fucking guy. Like it's going to be one of those two things. So that's when I started listening to the podcast. Cause I was like, there's no way someone can fake it for three hours of like, right. you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. just, <laughs> at all. So uh, I don't know if you remember, I, I was telling uh, right before we got started, but so there was one weekend. Um, cause I, I do a lot of spray paint and I do stencils of my drawings and sell those cool, on my website. Yeah. And, uh, uh, there was one weekend I had to get caught up and I had like 15 of them to paint. So I was like, all right, I'm going to throw a podcast in. And I had saw that you had been, you know, promoting yours a bunch. It's like, I got to know, <laughs> I got to know if it, you know how this really is. So I started listening to it. And even those first couple episodes that were like a little rough around the edges, yeah. it was still full of like a lot of like good information for tattooers. I even shared the podcast with the guy that was opening a shop at the time. I was like, Hey, just listen to this. Cause you don't know what you're doing. And there's some little nuggets in here of like yeah. actual good advice. Uh, so I listened to a couple episodes over the weekend while I was painting. And then Monday came around and that's when I had to start getting tattoos drawn for the week. And I sat down, I was like, all right, what am I going to listen to? I opened up my phone and your podcast is there. And I was like, all right, yeah, we can keep this. Right. I think the next episode was Adrian's. And I was like, <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll see what this is about. So I, I pop it in and I'm listening. And then like a couple minutes later, you message me saying, hey, would you want to be on the podcast? While yeah. I was listening, yeah. I was like, dude, what the fuck are yeah. the odds? Like, this is, this was crazy. So that was just such a moment of like, yeah, I'm going to go out there. Like, let, yeah. let's see what, what it's like. But yeah, it's just just nutty so yeah listening to that i was like all right this guy isn't you know the asshole that he's playing online i think the the mystery helped build it yeah in the beginning sure. which was an accident <laughs> um and like uh, that's just my kind of humor right uh, which like my girl reminds me every day that i have to be very careful with yeah. <laughs> you know whatever <laughs> For sure but i want to kind of get back to the skits yeah. a little bit more so putting that first video out I mean, what were, like, the feelings associated with that? At first, it was just, like, like really taking that in of, like, oh, man, this many people have, like, seen and enjoyed, like, what I made. Like, from the drawing, um, the skit itself, you know, the editing that took forever. Like, it was... It's work. Y yeah, it was a ton of mm -hmm. work, and it was great that it was appreciated. And then you sit there and you see, like, one million people have viewed this video. And then when you conceptualize a million people, it's like... I don't think I want to make another video. Like that is so many people. It's like, like a high bar to set. Yeah. Too. Oh, yeah. oh, for sure. Um, yeah. So it, it also kind of felt like, oh, is this like a one hit thing? Like, yeah. sh should I just, should I get lucky? Right. Should yeah. I leave it at that and not worry about it? Not do it again. Um, and then the, the next ones that I kept creating just kept raising that bar which was really cool until the day that it then dipped from that. So like all those feelings and doubt aside, you're like, I'm going to keep doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And Cause I think that's important. Right. You know, uh, the other thing that was really tough about it was like, I like to pack as much on my plate as I possibly can. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I like to be busy every yeah. hour of the day. And I already was. So it was like, <laughs> how the hell am I going to sneak filming videos in or yeah i was like oh i could go to the shop at 5 a.m and then film and like, <laughs> right. that, that would make sense uh, babe how much sleep does a human need <laughs> yeah. yeah uh so i i think i i definitely well my other thought too and was like how do i make money on this right. like i already drew the art why don't i throw prints up like you know do people want prints and so i started doing that pretty quickly by like the fifth video i got a website up and uh, just kind of, you know, found the way to monetize all of it. Because I was never part of the creator fund on TikTok. I never made a, a penny from, like, TikTok itself. So I, I always just wanted to find the different avenues for that. Um, but, yeah, I was always just excited about it, you know. Yeah. And took off with it pretty much right away. Yeah. Yeah. So you were like, well, how did you break that down? Like, okay, my plate is already packed. And now I want to do more. Yeah. Did you schedule times for it? Like, 
Do you uh, have routine on like writing scripts or ideas? I know you talked a little bit about the door board. Right. Yeah, that definitely. Like, how do you organize it? So really early on, I I made like a a whole new uh, folder on my iPad of like this is where I'm going to write down skit ideas. Um, however, whenever they come. And where I'll put all my drawings because almost every video I do has its own drawing. And, you know, not that they take all that long to make, but it's a whole new drawing up to like three a week that I had yeah. to do. Because uh, that's what you, you're like, OK, let me like optimize this ability and put a drawing in to sell a tattoo. Design. Right. 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 Exactly. Smart. Right. Yeah. A s sticker. I mean, the thing I can say now is we were 100 percent able to build out our shop on sticker sales, stickers, prints. Wow, yeah. yeah. And that was, that was huge shirts. Um, but yeah, so I, I wanted there to be a drawing to have, you know, something physical. And, and I learned that, you know, a lot of people were like, Oh, I would totally get that tattoo in my videos. Cause most of the time the client leaves saying like, Oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to get that. Yeah. So most of the comments are like, Oh shit, I'd get that. And you know, a lot of times when I do travel, people are getting, you know, whatever was in the video. Um, so, yeah, so I had to find the time to make the drawing, figure out the idea, write the script, uh, and that came to early mornings. I wake up at 4 a.m. every day just to th – those are the hours. No one bothers you from 4 to 7 a.m. Right. Uh, Besides the birds. Right, yeah. yeah. So I would draw really early in the morning. Uh, at the time, early on, I was just able to sneak over to the shop. My boss didn't get into, like, noon. I would start my first tattoo at 10. So I had, like, an, a good hour in the morning that I could film a video and – you know, hopefully get it done. But then after a while, it just became a weekend thing. I got my wife involved. She came and did all the filming. Uh, she f picked out all the clothes that I wear in the, in the skit. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Was uh, it weird, like, acting in the beginning? Kind of. So uh, in first and second grade, uh, I was the state champ for speech. So, yeah, I, I performed in front of, uh, like, I don't know. I'm probably blowing the number way up, but like one to 2000 people. Right. Um, I did uh, events like that. So I won it first and second grade and then moved in third grade. And uh, I always did everything solo and I never wanted like a group of people. Uh, so we moved in third grade and I kind of gave up on it then until high school. Um, if you guys ever seen the show Glee, mm -hmm. uh, do you know, I don't know a better way to describe him. Uh, the gay kid in Glee um, his name's Chris Colfer in real life. You know, Danny, is that the guy who hung himself? I could not tell you. Spoiler <laughs> no one alert, of those guys everyone. <laughs> uh, I think it's hanged. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. He hanged it himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. Um, any, anyway, Gotcha, dog. <laughs> Dang. Uh, I was in a speech and debate with that guy, uh, and he, you know, went on to be you know, a big actor and all that. So, um, I had always kind of acted throughout. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, you had some experience to rely on. It, yeah. I'd never done it in front of a camera though, which I realized was a little different, a little, right. little more intimidating. Uh, and then I kind of like figured out a process that I thought would work. And I basically, anytime I read a line, I read it three different ways just so I can edit it all together and like take the best cut and figure cool. out what the best, yeah. you know, way to piece it all together. Uh, but yeah, it just turned into like every waking minute needed to be dedicated to like I still tattoo five days a week, um, probably about like 50 hours a week. Uh, I still needed to create content, still needed to have a life. Like, yeah, yeah. became a lot. Uh, I was saying earlier, I golfed with my dad every weekend. That had to stop because golf's <laughs> like a seven hour event. Dude, I love golf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I hate it when I'm playing it. Right. But, like, for some reason, when I'm not, I love it. For know? sure. Yeah. yeah. I've been playing since I was eight, and I just like, it's like, okay, I got to stop. I got too many other things. I feel like it's good, though, for us tattooers to get out there and, you know, be part of nature. Yeah, and, you know, sure. Fucking yeah. Hit something really hard. I don't know. I laid on the beach for, like, two, three hours the other day. I am, my, my whole torso is, like, cherry red. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pink. Hell yeah. yeah. it's rough. Yeah. <laughs> it's rat. So yeah. you want to get tattooed. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Man, but, uh. Train. You got a train near, real close, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right, yeah, right there. On the other side of this building is yeah. the train. It could be a Cuban guy's car horn. <laughs> <laughs> so, specifically Cuban. Yeah. Seal the deal with Sanoderm. This is the shit right here. This is the only tattoo aftercare product I use on my clients. 
If they walk out the door without it, I don't feel safe. I don't know about you. If you care about your tattoos at all, you need to use this product. It's easy to apply. It's comfortable to wear. It's it. It can heal anything. This shit can heal anything. You've seen the videos. Use code CAMSUCKS for 15% off. We love it so much. We teamed up with them. We're giving you 15% off. Use code CAMSUCKS. Go to standardarm.com. Wait a minute. Why the hell would you think I know... Glee. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> you know every You do know reference. every uh, well, reference from everything. But Glee? You look like you know Glee. I know <laughs> you're throwing us these facts about people killing themselves. That's rad, stuff. dude. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was like a pedophile. So young <laughs> That's the shit that interests me. Okay, uh, yeah. yeah. Danny does like his crime stories, too. Hell yeah. So you... S- these videos are working. I'm going to continue. I'm going to... Pack more on my plate, build yeah. a routine for it. And because you've been doing it for a long time now, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, these last two months are the only break I've taken since last January. Yeah. And uh, we were starting to do like, hey, build the shop with us. Like, come watch the whole. Yeah, I saw some of that. Yeah. And then like the hardest part about that is you have to get every step. Like you have to get footage of every step. So if you just get carried away in the process and you get three steps ahead. Yeah. Like shit, like, and sometimes it's kind of annoying. Like, ugh, film me doing this, right? You know, right? We it, we almost needed an, our own filming day to like, hey, why don't we film the process of us building a booth? So then we can come in and just like build faking booth. it. Knock, yeah. Knock, oh, knock. Knock. Yeah. yeah, that's our Mondays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a handyman. The guy was such a train wreck, but he was a handyman that helped us uh, in the shop. And so we, when we went into the Maryland Expo. When we came back, so much progress was done because this guy would work all through the gotcha. night. Yeah. So we got like, that. Did you film any of this? Yeah. <laughs> so we were like, oh, shit. Like, no. Right. Uh, how, how do we make a consistent story? And we realized because I was getting like three hours of sleep because I'd wake up and be like, oh, and then we could put these on the yeah. walls. And yeah. So I was like, hey, let's take a step back. I can't, I can't take a step back from tattooing. That's my job. Yeah. Uh, I don't need to make videos right now. Why don't we just get the shop built? Yeah. So, yeah, we did that. Um, I think you, you asked a question before, and that, was it what I took out of my schedule or just, like, how we started? Like, how to organize it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the wife was a big help with that because, first of all, she was just so down to, like, okay, we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, what do you need from me? So we just went full force into, like, okay, what are these, you know, next steps? Um, And it was – I live by a calendar. I want to know what every minute of every day is going to be like. So I found where the hours were to draw, to write the sketches and all that. And then we'd go in Sunday. I'd come home. I'd edit the videos, have them say it on my phone to post throughout the week. So it just took one good day of filming and editing for the week, you know, ahead. A lot of people ask about my setup and the ink I use. All I use is Allegory ink. We have the white, the black, and the ultra black. This is my total setup right here. Get yours at allegoryinc.com. We got a discount code for you, unemployable for 20% off all their ink. Again, allegoryinc.com. How about you? What's your process like? How do you do it? So similar to yours, there was a lot of like trepidation with that first video. And I was feeling, I just like handed it to like my boy that works here. And I was like, this isn't going to make sense, but can you just film me doing this and then ask this and whatever? Cause I was like, I was going to like make pop up text. Okay. You know? And, uh, I think the video was like, he said, uh, being a tattoo artist, like must be so cool. You just get to sit here and draw all day. Right. And then like all the problems pop up. Yeah. And as I'm filming it, all the boys in the shop are like, you're a loser, you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm like, thanks, guys, you know, (laughs) just trying to market for you fucking assholes. And uh, (laughs) so similar experience. We posted it. It did. Dude, I didn't understand Facebook. I thought I kind of understand Instagram, but I wanted to, like, do it in this way that really looking back made absolutely no fucking sense. (laughs) And then uh, no idea about TikTok. Right. And I think like Cam and maybe Kyla were like, you should do TikTok. Um, you know, and I'm like, that's a children's app. And uh, obviously why they liked it. <laughs> and <laughs> so we're doing that. I'm realizing traction is coming. 
same as you though. I'm like, damn, a lot's on my plate. I don't really know if I have time for this. Yeah. Um, Danny was one of my clients at the time and he had mentioned that he did video editing, whatever. And I was like, Hey, maybe you could come in and like work on these ideas with me. So he would like, I don't know, a few times a month, like not often. Uh, and we started putting it together I have a little experience in marketing, so I could apply that back end stuff to it. <clears throat> um, at least doing like the research of like when to post, if it matters, how to post, video length, keywords, right. whatever. Um, so like working on that, getting cool content going. Um, I think on our side, we were kind of some of the first to do the tattoo skits. Right. So there really wasn't we were kind of like a new interesting idea. So I think that that helped our timing. Um, all the ideas of like, did I get lucky? Is this a phase? How, what's the potential? Right. Yeah. So once I realized like this is important, um, I like dove in I, probably like four months of like really spending three hours a day whether it's on like the posting, the researching, kind of going nuts. Yeah. And like my girl was like, you're a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, I'm like, on June 12th, Facebook is going to change this. And, this, and yeah. she's like, I don't care, bro. Yeah. And then feeling like I had it down and then also realizing like I couldn't live like this anymore. For sure. So at that point, like Danny's full time here because I'm like, this is really important. I need Danny here all the time. Um, I mean, him and I, like, really built it together in that sense. Um, you know, obviously, it's a group effort. You know, just like Cam was essential, just like the guys at the shop, for real, like, we're essential. Right. Because, like, we're filming, like, during shop hours yeah. or, like, during people's days. And, and like, wow. even being the owner, I don't want to get in anyone's way. Right. Like, apologizing to people for having to turn the music down or whatever. You, yeah. You know. Yeah, you know. for sure. Uh and, like, without the entire shop being on board, it would not have existed. Yeah. Um, that, I, I can't believe that happened, that that many people were just like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. That's, it took a lot of convincing. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It took a lot of convincing. There's well, a once lot of artists. things started going viral, I think they were like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. whatever. And then, so I feel like I had this plan down. So then we kind of brought Kyla on board. And I was like, you need to follow this recipe exactly. You know, yeah. and she did a good job and she does all the posting and all that stuff. Um, and then just kind of building from there. At the time, I was tattooing five days a week. So I was like, okay, guys, like, can we pick one day a week to do all the filming? Because uh, we were just kind of doing it at night, kind of like you were saying, like wherever it fit. Right. Yep. And I was like, this is disorganized. It doesn't feel right. It feels rushed. I didn't like it. Like, yeah. let's separate, let's create the organization. So that was kind of tough because it was like six days a week. Sundays were for my girl. But it's like the all of Sunday I'm still at work. Right. You know, so that wasn't like exactly working. So now I do tattoo four days a week. Mondays are filmed. Tuesdays off. Also for like my own time. Yeah. You know, right. like sometimes I'm like, babe. I'm going to go do stuff all day. I don't know what I'm doing. That's part of the day off. I'm going to make it up as I go yeah. and I'm going to be fucking alone, you know? <laughs> uh, but like getting that and then just kind of like building up, like you said, like, okay, these are getting views, but like, what am I doing with the views? Right. Like, am I booking appointments? Am I selling merch? Yeah. You know, am I collabing with other people? Uh, uh, am I working with sponsorship companies? You know, like I don't want to waste this. Right. You know, it's, we're not going to be going up forever. Like I got to use it while it's going. Yeah. So brainstorming with the guys, but I think without the organization, like it would have crumbled. It would have became too much for definitely me, probably everyone else. Um, and, and, and we build and we tailor it. Like I was even saying in the beginning of this, like the podcast was a new idea. You know, we started this with iPhones and like, you know, we've upgraded, you know, the tech, the people, um, the staff, the guests, and like now at the new shop, we're building like a permanent studio. So we're That's not so like cool. in the way, Yeah, you know, but I feel like, you know, the problems come, like we were talking about the new shop and you just 
provide a solution. Problems come, yeah. provide a solution, you know, and grow. Yeah, right? for sure. Yeah, I I think that that organization uh, is really what sets a lot of creators apart because you'll see people create and do f- well for a while and that kind of, you know, when they're like, they're, you know, on top of everything. Right. And then the videos start coming less and less often or they're not as good or an idea just comes out and it's like, okay. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, I do think that is the thing that separ- separates it. I, I feel like every time I saw one of your videos come up, I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch that. Like, just see, you know, <laughs> what, what's this one? Where there are other creators that they post, and I'm like, oh, the last 10 haven't been yeah. good. Like, and uh, not even to talk shit, because this is a really hard thing to stay on top of. You know, just between the two of us, it consumed consumed us forever to figure right, it out. And, right. you know, yeah. Th- I think our biggest difference is you got a whole shop behind it where I was like, nope, it's just going to be me. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to put this on anyone else. Uh, Bro, what about, like, coming up with new skits every fucking time, dude? dude? Yeah, I mean, mine follows such a formula, though. Like, mine is, okay, what's the pun, and then how can I deliver it? That's, like, all I got to figure out. And then yeah. it's like, hey, what goofy outfit do we want right. to wear to, like, you know? <laughs> Let's make sure my belly's out. Now how do we <laughs> how do we go from there? Similar here. Like, yeah. What costume can we put right. Cam or Adrian in? Yeah. <laughs> Just You're, wait till later, dude. Yeah. No. <laughs> you guys I'm are, going home. <laughs> Your production value lately has gotten way better. Like, yeah. and, and it's you know, I, I get really sad when like the ones I spent like fucking days editing, and there's fucking like all this yeah. huge production. They're like, damn, and it really didn't hit. But it hit my heart. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah for sure. <laughs> you know, I I talked about about that on uh, a, another podcast, but it there was a moment when I started meeting all these creators and they would post a video up and they'd be like, I don't give a shit what it does. Like, you know, I just made the video and that was the fun part in the beginning. I was like, you don't care what it does. Like, dude, how many hours did that take you? And like, yeah. what the hell? Uh, until I realized like you kind of can't care because like, yes, good content usually prevails, but sometimes it doesn't. Right, and yeah. then sometimes your shit ideas that you're like, look, I have no, nothing else you know, on my mind right now, let's just post this one up and then it crushes it. Yeah. And so that, that's when I started realizing like, Oh, it's way better not to care. Like, cause it's just, yeah, you don't want to set, drop you don't set yeah. like, expectations. Yeah. yeah. And there's some that I'm like, even the cyber sigilism one, which I thought was going to be funny, <laughs> but it's just on fucking like what? Almost 7 million views. I'm I like, knew fucking. it was going <laughs> to hit. <laughs> <laughs> there's once in a while, it's not often, but I'm like, and I know this like makes me a bad person, but I don't care. I am who I am, accept it or not. I was like, this is gonna piss people off. Yeah, right. And I'm gonna be waiting in the comments. Yeah. You know? Um I, I do those too. My cash only videos, I yeah. know people are gonna get mad at. Dude, the Chinese takeout order video was really funny. <laughs> I appreciate was it. Was really I love that funny. Yeah. 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 Like, and you've had a few that were really funny. And like I um and you you know, maybe you can relate. Spent like I know they're silly, like, little videos, but, like, I take it serious. Right. You know, because at the end of the day, like, where it all started and where it ends is, like, I'm trying to take care of the guys and girls at my shop. Right. That's what it's about. Like, I'm trying to provide, as an owner, I feel like that's my responsibility. And, like, I'm so grateful we found, like, a fun way where we can keep a decent amount of, like, authenticity of, like, who we are and, like, what we represent, which is really, like, we like to have fun. Right. And don't take yourself too serious. And if we can throw some hidden messages in there to help with etiquette, awesome. Yeah. But that's, like, what it is. So, like, like I do care, you know? And, like, I want this number two phone drop of today. <laughs> um, like, I want the videos to do well enough to keep the artists booked, relevant, and to feel like they work at the best shop in the world. Do you, you know? do you see a translation there? Like if your videos do well, does the shop stay busier? I feel like we have a good enough traction now where it's, it kind of continues. Right. Um, very much so in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, that's like where I realized, I guess the power of it. Yeah. You know, because even like myself, like I went from like being a few you know, months booked out to like, Kyla, don't book any more people, you know? And, uh, with the guys here, um, like I know you've, you felt. Oh, every 
the power of the videos. Of them, for yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, they've definitely helped me. Did you feel any extra pressure being a uh, an apprentice and having like the success online? Like, and um, I'll just phrase it. The the reason I ask is one of the reasons we haven't announced that she's going to apprentice is like I just feel like as soon as you put it out there, all that pressure is coming in. It is weird. What helped me was that I was already like a couple months into my apprenticeship before we started doing the skits. Like I okay. think I was already here for like eight, ten months, like almost a year. Like I think I was like yeah. already like did my first tattoo at that point. So like the the like being comfortable with the guys was already there. You know, um, it didn't really like hit till we did Philly. Oh, and, like, yeah. saw it in person. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, it, was, it was awesome because, for me, like, he got a lot of hate. Um, I got a lot of support. What was awesome yeah. for him? <laughs> <laughs> well, what was awesome is I got a lot of support from other apprentices. Oh, okay. Like, I got a lot of apprentices that would reach out to me and, like, you know, questions, wonder about my story, or, like, how I got my apprenticeship or any advice for other apprentices. So I got a lot of, like, really good feedback. And then it was, like, a lot of older tattooers interested in like you know like the future or like what i've done already so for me it's been pretty good i haven't gotten like too much of the hate that's cool um i also i don't know if you really have anything else to compare it to that too that's like a good point like i don't know what it's like without it you know yeah. so it's kind of like all i know yeah. i mean from like hearing other apprentices stories you know that's like what i can gauge stuff off of but hmm. For the most part, for me, it's been pretty cool. Nice. Um, I try not to. I don't really know how to explain it. I just, I'm just appreciative of it. Really, yeah. it's awesome to be able to meet as many people as I've met. My point in my career. That's real. Um, it's for me the coolest part was just talking to other apprentices, like being like kind of like a beacon for other apprentices really is like the coolest part. Like yeah. having like, I'll like get genuine messages from people. They're like, yo, like having a rough time. You got any advice or I'm looking to get into an apprenticeship. Do you have any advice? You know? So like that part's been pretty cool. Hell yeah. Right on. Yeah. It's I, definitely helped like start the career though. Oh, like now that sure. like I'm tattooing full time, it's definitely was like that jump start that I'm very lucky to have. that Not a lot of people have gotten. Yeah. It's good that you can recognize that. Like I'm very you, appreciative of yeah, it. Yeah, that's cool. I uh, I got really busy really quick as a tattooer, and I don't think that was a good thing because I I basically went one month um, after my apprenticeship where I started. I announced to you know my Instagram like, hey, if you want to come get tattooed, you can. And people right away were like feeling it out, and then on every spare minute I had, I tattooed my wife and posted online yeah. and then it just took off. So nice. I went one month of maybe struggling a little bit. And then like after that month, I was booked out for about three months, which I'm not flexing at all. Cause I shouldn't have been that busy. Cause I yeah. was taking on pieces that like I shouldn't have at the time and just didn't know any better. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'll get a lot of that too, but I'll like turn them down or like send them to other artists yeah. here. I mean, even that tattoo you did the other day, I, I wouldn't take that tattoo on now. I'm not a realism guy, <laughs> but you. like, yeah, you it took, but it took me like two and a half years of, of sure. like, and like I draw that, like right. I never like drew flash. Like I drew realism. Like that's what I wanted to do. And it's taken me this long to even be like, okay, maybe I'll do it on a friend. Yeah. Like, you know, sure. like someone I'm comfortable with, you know, like, and even then, <laughs> yeah. even then it's like. Yeah, I haven't even finished the tattoo on the other side. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> this is like a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Longer, dude. The lines are clean, though. It's yeah. still there. It didn't fall out. What What I've seen is like, because my apprenticeship was very different than Cam's, so I feel like I can see the contrast, right? And I think there is a ton more pressure on him, uh, which maybe you're just used to and it doesn't feel like it. And I really think he's you know, risen to the occasion. Right. Which is, which is cool to see. And that's like, you know, big on you, dude. Um, I don't know if, if I could have handled the pressure. Yeah. Definitely. A lot of times, like when we're going through stuff or like I'm giving cam shit. Um, cause like in real life, like my relationship with cam is really strong and I'm very like protective over that and, and whatever. It's not like, just bully him all the time it's just like most of the time i do bully him yeah but like, <laughs> yeah, yeah and uh 
So to to see that and and sometimes like he'll be going through something that maybe I think is like wrong or he's doing something wrong, but I am very conscious of like, well, I don't really know what it's like to be him or like to have that pressure or right. or like whatever. I mean, yeah, Philly was his first convention and uh it was nuts. we were tattooing yeah. right next yeah. to each other and and you know how conventions are, bro. Like yeah. first off you're just uncomfortable. Yeah. You're in another city. And then it's like, did I fucking forget anything? Do I have everything I need? Even when I have everything I need, <laughs> I'm still not comfortable tattooing. Yeah. And then he has fucking 50 people watching him the whole convention. Everyone wants to take pictures. You got to not say Damn. something mean and yeah. Blah, 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 yeah. this and that. Like, I'm already not comfortable you know? tattooing. I'm right. making fun of him out loud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Oh, man. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, bro, Cam, this fucking <laughs> douchebag behind me. Blah, blah, blah. Like, this is fun. And like, oh, yeah. fuck you, Cam, yeah. you know? So, I knew that I'm was walking, coming, bro. I'm walking down the hall, like, the ho- aisles, and everyone's like, fuck you, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, and I'm just I, looking up, like, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. That all our fucking discount codes are camps. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was so worried going to the first one that I'm going to get these like big tough tattoos being like, uh, I know. thought I was going to get pressed too, but it yeah. was actually, it was actually like pretty cool. It, it was great. Yeah. Uh, there was even like one aisle. I, I think it was recently um, we did Atlanta and there were like a lot of the like, you know, Chicano tattooers that mm-hmm. were all there. And I was like, oh, this is probably not like the vibe. And I walked down and people were like, hey, it's right. the yeah. guy. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, right. You're yeah. like, we're cool. Yeah. yeah, we're yeah, like, good. yeah. I like wandered away from like John like, for like a minute in Philly and like a, like these big burly tattooers, <laughs> fucking face tats, head yeah. tats. Like, yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm I'm happy to hear that you also get support. Yeah, because I had I was like, uh oh, like, are people just going to be like, oh, you're just making dumb fucking videos to get attention, right? You know, and like your tattoos suck. That's like what well, was yeah, in my Phil- head. Philly yeah. was yeah. also your first show after like TikTok too, so it was weird for you as yeah, well. Yeah, because I like wrote off conventions because I got real tired of the tattoo community for a little bit, which yeah. I know was on me, but um, that was just the experience. Like I was getting discouraged. I didn't feel like people were helping each other. Uh, and I think with COVID and everyone being inside and like, you know, reaching out on the internet, it kind of changed things. Right. And I think people came back really grateful to be able to travel. And it, and it was like a nicer environment. At least that's what I experienced right. with Philly. Yeah. So the only thing I ever had to compare it to was the Fresno Tattoo Expo, which is like a swap meet. Where people just show the phone to the booth and go, how much for this? Yeah. You give them a price and they keep walking until yeah, yeah. they find the lowest one. They're like, I'll be back maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, why would I want to do a convention? Yeah. Like that that yeah. sounds, I don't want to travel and go and do that. My buddies were like, no, it'll be a great time. Like we will have so much fun. Yeah. So I was like, all right, let's try it out. And uh, so funny enough, I've been a black and gray only tattooer for like three years now. Right. And then I start posting all these videos with with my drawings and the biggest reason I did it. Cause you know, once again, I didn't expect it to blow up. I made the tattoo, the unicorn dog intentionally in color. So that when I posted it up and people were like, Oh, I'll get it. I'd be like, oh, I don't tattoo color. Like, right. sorry, <laughs> you know, but I told everyone, if you want the line work, I'll send it to you. You yeah. can get it done by whoever. Um, and a bunch of people took me up on that. Cool. So I intentionally made them color uh, and then I did a guest spot in Maryland. And even when I traveled to that one, I was like, hey, I'm going to be black and gray only because that's all I want to bring with me. Yeah. It's just like black ink. it's easier. Yeah, like that's it. <laughs> yeah. And everyone was cool that I tattooed there. So then at the expo, I was like, okay, I either have to stay on this path of I'm a black and gray only tattooer or I got to open it up because people right. from, from the internet know me as this full color, like goofy dude. Uh, so I was like, all right, let's do color, whatever. I didn't tell anyone that was my first color in right, three years. Right. Uh, until I was sitting down with the dude, and he was super cool. It was, uh, I did, um, like, a cardinal sin. Yeah, guy was a cardinal smoking a cigarette with money in his hand yeah. and shit like that. And uh, I'm, like, halfway through. I'm like, by the way, I haven't tattooed color in, like, right. years. Dude was like, do you know how? Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Have you ever? We'll find so, out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Came out fine. Well, you know, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you said you got a lot of love and support with all that i mean were there times where it wasn't that where you got hate or and and then if if so like how do you handle that uh yeah yeah there's been hate just from people on the internet or trolls and yeah. you know awful uh i didn't let a lot sometimes if i'm in a bad mood i'll 
I'll message them back. Yeah. And, you know, because uh, I was also in debate in high school. So I'm like, oh, you want to go. Right. Like, like, <laughs> let's play this game. And I'll still catch myself doing it sometimes. I'm like, what? This is not worth my time. Right. Uh, one of the things I took from this podcast was like pin the shittiest comment and just like <laughs> let, oh, man, that has been. Let your people yeah. fight them for you. Oh, man, yeah. they come out for it. Uh, but the biggest hate that I got, so that, that same shop that I keep referencing, um, I had a video, it was the first video that I showed my belly in and that I played, you know, quote unquote, uh, a girl in. Right. And I was like, I know as <laughs> soon as this video goes up, I am dead to those guys. Right. Like <laughs> there is no lower I could go. Right. And so I actually sat on it for like a day yeah. and I was like, do I want to like ruin that? And then I finally posted it and that's like my most watched video of all yeah. time. But haven't heard from a single one of them <laughs> since then. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I just, like, everyone has their own set of standards that they follow and that they believe in. And if I'm going astray from theirs, I don't give a shit. Because yeah. I have my own that, you know, uh, that I follow. The biggest hate that I've gotten that really irritated me was, uh, I think I think I might have heard it happen to one of you guys too. People were calling me transphobic. because yeah, it happened to me. They yeah. put me in a wig for a video. Right. And so what I told them, and, like, this was always my argument, was, one, I've never said that was a female other right. than, you know, yeah. a moment again. So I was like, so you saying that I'm somehow doing that, that's showing your transphobia because yeah, right. I'm not a woman. Like, you know, I'm, I'm just me dressed as that, you know. Uh, so those were the ones that would totally get under my skin. But then I realized those are just those trolls, right. you, you know, just trying to. The people that care about that are the, like, yeah. Like the, yeah. Yeah, and I'm not <laughs> hating on anyone, me you know either, I mean? But- Silly None goofy. of us are. We're making yeah. fucking skits. I like, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Why are you going to us? Like, yeah. looking to hate us? It doesn't make sense. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just I was able to brush it aside for the most part. There's never really been one that's like stuck with me or uh, like really gotten under my skin, which has been cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How about you? I feel like you get a, a lot more hate. You able to? Yeah. So, well, actually, because I was thinking that, because like I'm like watch like when I watch your videos. I'm like, oh, these are, like, tasteful, they're, like, light, and, and they're fun. Like, right. they're really fun. Yeah, you know? fun's what I'm going for. And uh, and I even remember thinking, like, wow, like, this really appeals to a large audience. Right. You know? And I know that, like, ours are, like, a little more niche. They're a little more that, like, rough humor. Um, in the beginning, it was only hate. Right. And I didn't really understand how the internet worked. And I, but like Adrian does, and he came up and he's like, you're a meme on the internet. <laughs> and I was like, what does that mean? He's yeah. like, it's bad. <laughs> That's what he said. So I was like, okay, like whatever, I don't care. Yeah. And, uh, and I actually didn't care because I didn't like understand. Wow. Later, I, I kind of understood a little more. And I remember thinking, is this going to negatively impact the shot? Right? Yeah. And uh, I also remember thinking, maybe I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> you know? Doesn't matter. Right, right. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable. Woody, thanks for joining us again, man. Pleasure. Really appreciate it. it. Awesome. Super awesome to have you here. And we'll catch you guys next week. I hope you guys are enjoying this episode of the Unemployable Podcast. We have the Unemployable t shirt. It's okay. Also, we have a variety of other clothing on the Model Citizen Apparel. Dot com. You can even use discount code CAMSUCKS for 10% off. Why are you guys standing behind me?